Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It is exactly five after tonight, and that was a video clip of um, the heart of beers um, obviously overflowing. Um, online is Pietrus Fenter to talk to us about uh, the water resources issue there, the uh, overflow of uh, the dam after very, very heavy rains. Pietrus, a very good morning to you. Welcome to the program. And thank you indeed for being so patient. Good morning and morning to all listeners. Okay, um, we viewed... We were viewing a clip of the overflow of the water at the heart of Beers. There was a siren going off in the background. What was the reason for the siren? Is that some some form of alert to the people in the area? Well, at the moment, we experience um, quite a big rainfall in the upper catchment, which is Johannesburg, right through from um, Kingston Park to Kruger's Door. So the collective flow coming from that area has actually peaked yesterday and the department had to open up um, all 10 sluices, which um, was quite significant um, and it's been considered as um, um, quite a vast average rainfall. And uh, obviously there was um, quite a lot of concern about this, a lot of water running down the Crocodile River, down to Perth and uh, lower down into the crocodile at the top of the So um, there had to be some emergency measures being taken for farmers to take out their pumps from the water to prevent flooding. And it, it is a significant amount of water, but we have seen much more in the past. So, Pietrus, how do you alert the farmers, you know, all the way downstream, as you've indicated, um, Brits and further down all along the Crocodile River. Uh, what's the mode or means of communication? I know that we're very technical, technologically advanced. We now have WhatsApp and different groups, etc. Um, are those the, um, you know, the means of communication so that people get the information way in advance and are able to mitigate possible floods on their land? Yes, you know, um, maybe I can just start by saying the department has for a long time already had metric systems in place uh, where there's online um, loggers with batteries um, at different stations that remotely take or takes uh, measurements maybe on an hourly basis. And in some cases, if there is higher flow being measured, it is in upscale, and that has been read into the system and many people can even online go and check normally within an hour or two hours that things are updated on our website and uh, apart from that there's internal communication in the department of the hydrologist and the people that do flood control and measurement that, that can alert people a little bit quicker than the two hour system in that regard yesterday um, when the flat was start picking up, it was um, notified and we could start opening up sluices before the water actually reached the dam. We had such a system at Kalkiaville close to Nexa before entering the dam to do this measurement. And then secondly, in the department know of that, um, the very old system is at the dam, there is a um, quite a strong alarm system that um, blow down and some people up to birth and hear that. But that is just um, a normal thing that is still happening as it has happened in the past. What is really happening when we um, notify is a disaster symptom at birth with um, all the necessary people from fire and um, whoever is involved on that is quite uh, including also you know, the farm um, unions and numbers. Then there is also, apart from notifying the disaster center, there is a WhatsApp system where um, people that uh, are there directly affected next to the river can be notified w with immediate effect on their cell phones. So, Pietrus, obviously, uh, with the opening up of all the sluice gates, uh, it is of 
great spectator interest. Is it safe for people to go and, you know, spend a couple of hours watching this beautiful um, event of nature with all the sluice gates open and seeing this beautiful water running down, etc.? Or, or do you rather caution people not to, to come sightseeing at this time of, you know, with the sluice gates being open? I'm kind of wondering in terms of safety, um, or do you have all of those safety measures in place? Well, the department are concerned and we do have plans in place. We're running into the centenary uh, for the dam. The dam was completed in 2023. So next year is 100 years. And there's a lot of things being planned for the hospital. So dam. One of that is wow. to improve in terms of um, tourism. There is, um, on a constant basis, people coming to visit the dam. Many people uh, for a day or two in South Africa or Johannesburg after conferences and whatever. And then they go to visit Sun City and the Harpesper Dam is a permanent point of stopping. And there's a lot, um, you know, of visual um, things to experience at the dam. But, you know, we're not really geared at the moment as we would like to be for visitors. Ironically, I was on the dam well, yesterday, I was quite surprised. There's an uh, intense flocking of people, but um, this time there wasn't uh, more than normal. You know, the dam do deal with um, a lot of visitors over weekends, and uh, I would even uh, describe yesterday's visit less than an average weekend. I think it was just due to all the rain where the people come yeah. from. I think they probably have to deal with their own um, um, rain around their houses, um, maybe, and of and course, on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, people but don't like being on the roads. Sorry, what okay, I, was as I, I said, is, people don't I'm like people. All right, can I go ahead? Sorry. Okay, I so said people don't like being on the roads in this wet weather, and uh, you touched on a word there, challenges. What would they be for um, the Hartebeers for dam, the dam wall, and the people in the immediate environment? What would the challenges be with such heavy rainfall, and are they able to cope with this type of rainfall? I did follow you say that the risk for uh, down the dam. The, the immediate the, environment, the dam wall, the immediate environment, and also downstream. You know, I've, I've, I had quite a few people, and you know, the people right in the department like to far that we are concerned about dam safety, and the dam safety certificate for some dams haven't been signed off which is a concern that the department do not have the dam safety um, with the five, seven engineers that was there as all went on pension and the department is not dealing with the matter of dam safety correctly, but many people are um, in quite a lot of panic at the moment that, you know, can't all the dams start failing. I just want to say, um, you know, they still on an ongoing basis in dam safety inspections being done, but the final sign off of engineers um, on that uh, dam safety inspections is one of the concerns at the moment. So they... Okay, we seem to have lost Pietra Svente. The line was quite bad, but um, it was an important story we wanted to share with one and all. Uh, so just keep your eye on that uh, issue, and that is, of course, uh, the overflow of uh, heart to pierce or uh, the dam being overflown and um, overflooded. Correction, uh, wrong word, uh, usage of the wrong word there. Um, and also, Pietras did touch on the issue around uh, the dam wall safety, so that's something of grave concern. Maybe we can... Um, follow up on this issue later on in the week. It is exactly 14 after 9 o'clock. We are way over time with our news, but I do understand 
uh, Zai Jadwood, our news correspondent, is standing by and he's going to go straight into the news bulletin of the morning.